Hey, how's it going? Alex here from Idea Spot. I've got a WooCommerce tutorial using this demo site called Playful Print. That's an Astra starter site. Head over to your dashboard. Um, you can run the WooCommerce setup wizard and set up WooCommerce for your store. If you don't have the um, WooCommerce setup wizard option on your dashboard, you can go ahead and um, find that option just go ahead and click on help there under settings and the setup wizard will be up there. So you can run the setup wizard in that way. Um, you'll get this screen. You want to set up where is your store based? I'm based in Australia, but whichever country you're based in, fill in your address and uh, fill in your city and state, your postcode. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and fill out those couple details there. Um, nothing too complicated about this. Just type in your details and then choose your currency. I'm going to plan to sell both physical and digital and you can untick that box there. I think I don't really need tracking and then go, let's go. So wait for that to load for a few seconds. You're going to want to use, I like using Stripe and PayPal. Uh, those are the way I like to accept for credit cards and for PayPal. I think those are fairly both useful and um, fairly popular payment methods. So let's um, make sure both of those are selected. Um, just go ahead and click continue there and then wait for that to load. Okay. Now we just have to set up the shipping options. I like to just use free shipping and just include the price of shipping in the product. I think customers tend to prefer that. So just hit free shipping for now. Um, you can change the units of measurement. I like kilos and centimeters, but you can use pounds and inches. Whatever you prefer is fine. Um, if you're shipping physical products, you can tick that. But if you're not, um, if you did drop shipping or if you're doing print on demand, you don't need to tick that. So hit continue and wait for that to load up. Now, once this finishes loading, we will get a few more options to set up. Um, we don't need any of these actually for now, even though I kind of do like MailChimp and Facebook, you're totally free to set those things up. You don't need them straight away, but um, I might cover those in a later tutorial. We can untick that or we can just skip this step altogether. I think it's fine for now. Um, Jetpack, we don't need Jetpack at all. We can skip this step as well. So that's all good. And we are ready to start selling. You will need a PayPal business account and a Stripe account to accept payments. You can head back to your dashboard. I'm going to show you quickly how to do um, set up your Stripe account. You can just click start now. Setting up a Stripe account is, is super easy, super fast. You just need to fill in those few details, your email, your name, your password, um, confirm your password. Um, nothing that's too complicated here, folks. I'm definitely not a robot. And then once you've created your Stripe account, you'll get to your Stripe dashboard. Um, go ahead there, save your password, and um, you'll get a couple options here about developer integrations or pre-built solutions. You can just skip that for now. It's all very simple to set this up, actually. Um, I'm just going to add a name to this account it's unnamed at the moment. I'm just going to call it um, idea spot class just for this demonstration. Um, once you've set that up, go ahead and add the name and you're going to want to activate your account. So activating the account, um, you'll get an email to your email. Go ahead, click your email and confirm your email address. You might get asked to log back in again here. Go ahead and put your password. Make sure you've got a good password for these kind of websites because you don't want to lose your money to some um, hacker or something like that. Go ahead, um, log back in and your email has been confirmed. So that's all good. Um, there's still a bit more activation to go on this. You'll need to put some details about your um, business and your payment details, those kind of things. Go ahead and um, go through that process. It doesn't really take very long as long as you've got your business details, your website, um, a quick description about your business and what industry you're in. Um, you can 
set the type of business as a sole trader. That's fine. That's optional there. You'll need a business address, business phone number. Um, Go ahead and fill those details out. You'll definitely need a bank account so you can actually get paid into your bank account. You'll need details for that. And two-step authentication by text message. Um, You can use your mobile phone to get a text message or you can use Google Authenticator as well. Um, go ahead and submit your application. It it gets processed really fast, so um, you can get started straight away with this. Now back on our dashboard under WooCommerce settings, go to payments and then click on Stripe. And that will take you to your Stripe settings. You're going to need to get your Stripe keys. You can follow the link there and um, make sure that's ticked. You can remove that Stripe branding from the title and description. And also, I'm going to use test mode for this, but disable test mode when you're ready to go live. But I'm going to use the test mode keys. Um, Go ahead and follow that link to your Stripe dashboard. Um, Copy the keys. I've got that yellow arrow there. You can toggle that arrow to live when you're ready and get the live keys. Um, But I've got the test keys in here. Paste those in. Um, and you just get those keys and paste them into the relevant boxes. Fairly simple. Most other options we can leave as default. I'd like to put a nice description in the statement descriptor for your customers. Um, I like to disable that payment request button, um, but other than that, I leave everything fairly default. Um, Go ahead and click Save Changes. Okay, now just make sure you've got your secret key and your publishable key all saved in there. That all looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and view the site. Let's see. If everything's worked out, then we should be able to click a product and the product will load up. You can add the product to cart and we should have our product in the cart. Let's view the cart and let's proceed to the checkout. Let's see what this looks like. We'll have PayPal and credit card options. If you click credit card, it'll show that we are in test mode. But if you're using the live keys, um, you can use live and you can allow your customers to pay by credit card. So that's really all there is to it. So let's go back to our WooCommerce settings and let's set up our PayPal checkout. So let's click on PayPal checkout and this will give us the options to set up PayPal. You want to click that blue button to link it to your PayPal business account. If you don't have a business account, that's fine. It's pretty easy to um, sign up for a PayPal business. You just need your um, email, hit next. Um, you'll get um, a list of information that you'll need. You don't need it straight away. You can um, fill it in later, but um, it's all fairly straightforward stuff. Um, you go ahead and create your application and then once your PayPal account is all active and set up, go back to your WooCommerce settings under payments, PayPal checkout, um, go ahead and click PayPal checkout and you can link it to your PayPal account. It's fairly simple. Um, go ahead and click that blue button to set up your API credentials. It'll take you to the login screen where you log in after you've clicked next, you can go ahead and log into your account and it will ask you for authorization to access the WooCommerce store. So go ahead, click that. And once you've successfully authorized, you can go back to your dashboard. Um, That all works fine. Um, You'll get the link to your website there um, if everything's worked fine. And yeah, very, very simple process. And now PayPal is set up. You'll see that your um, description is there. I like to delete that, make it a bit cleaner for the website checkout. Just pay by Pay via PayPal is good. Um, uh, you've got your username, API info in there. And um, you can add a logo and a header, but everything else you can pretty much leave as default and everything will work just fine. Um, that's pretty much it, really. All of this, you can just leave it as is. Just make sure you hit save there at the end. And that's about it. So... Um, let's go ahead and visit the store and see what this looks like. Um, this will load and let's try, let's try putting a t-shirt here. Let's put a t-shirt through the process. Um, 
now we've got that PayPal button working. We can add to cart. People can click buy it now and use PayPal to buy it now if they want to. That actually is really helpful. Um, but let's add it to cart and view the cart and see what this looks like. So now we've got a nice PayPal button um, in our cart. I'm just going to remove some of this other stuff from the from the cart. Just tidy that up a little bit. Um, if we proceed to checkout, we'll see we've got PayPal and credit card options there now. So PayPal is PayPal. Credit card uses Stripe. Customers can go ahead and buy things from the website now. So I think while you're still working and getting this website ready, I really recommend this plugin called um, Coming Soon Page and Maintenance Mode. Just while you're setting up an online store, um, it'll create this um, Coming Soon page so people don't have to look at your um, half-finished website while you're still working on it. But it, it lets you work on it while you're logged in. It's just your visitors will just see um, that splash page. Um, the other thing... Somehow WooCommerce managed to install Jetpack by default. I'm going to just deactivate that and delete it. Um, not sure. I think it might be the way this starter site works. When it installs, you get a few plugins that you don't want. Um, I don't want WooCommerce services either. That gives you that nag screen about installing Jetpack. Um, you totally don't need Jetpack. There's plenty of other um, options for um, WordPress optimization besides Jetpack. Um, so I'll just delete that one and I'll go ahead and delete that um, WooCommerce services thing as well. Neither of those are necessary to run your WooCommerce store. So that wraps it up. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.